Here we continue the flex continuity requirements for isolated converters. The flex continuity rule simply states that the net flex in the magnetic core should be continuous because if there are any discontinuities or jumps in the flex waveform that would mean infinite voltages. Okay. So in part one of uh, uh, the flex continuity video uh, we consider this example case where we uh, to begin with just had a single winding on this uh, ferret core and we connected that winding directly in series with this switch. So when the switch is turned on we apply a constant voltage across the this winding so voltage applied across an inductor the current rises linearly and therefore the flex in the core which is decided only by I1 also rises linearly. Okay. Now when you turn off the switch instantaneously the current I1 comes to zero but that also means the flex also comes to zero instantaneously from a finite positive value and that is not allowed that would violate the flex continuity requirement. Now if you add a second winding and uh, associated components such that there can be a current in the second winding then it becomes possible for this circuit to be a valid circuit we still need to uh, look at the um, the dot polarity of the two windings and uh, make sure that the current is in the right direction but if we ensure that then this becomes a valid circuit okay. so um, here is the um, circuit schematic with the dots representing the correct winding directions we have to make sure that when the current I1 is interrupted by this switch then on the secondary side I2 has the correct uh, current direction as well as the magnitude to make sure that the flex, the net flex in the core is continuous. So in the next slide we will look at uh, the actual waveforms of uh, the two currents I1 and I2 and uh, convince ourselves that the, the, the flex remains continuous and therefore the circuit is indeed a valid circuit. So here is the circuit schematic of the previous uh, configuration and uh, recall that uh, when currents enter the dot in different windings the uh, flex due to these currents they add in the in the magnetic core or the flex produced by these two currents are in the same direction in the ferret core. Okay. So for the uh, situation here where both I1 and I2 are entering the dot the flex due to these currents would be given by this expression. The flex is the total MMF over the reluctance and the total MMF is uh, N1 primary turns times the primary current I1 plus N2 times I2. Okay. So that the plus is because the currents are entering the dot in both windings. Uh, if for example the dot only on the secondary side was at the bottom then this would be a minus sign. Okay. But here it is um, both are entering the dot so the flex is um, the sum of the two MMFs divided by the reluctance. So then uh, next we look at the waveforms. The first waveform is the gate drive waveform. So when Q is 1 it means the switch is on, Q is 0 means the switch is off. Okay. So consider the interval when Q is 1, the switch is on and when the switch is on uh, we can see that the uh, voltage, uh, we apply this um, input voltage V in across the primary winding. So this will be positive at this end, negative at this end with the magnitude of V in only during the Q equals 1 interval. So, uh, so because of that the induced EMF on the secondary side will also be positive at the dot and that we can see it will reverse bias the diode. Okay? So therefore there is no current in the secondary side I2 is 0 and that is also verified here I2 is 0. And coming back to the primary side the current is now since there is no secondary current so this is simply the current in an inductance um, to which we apply a constant DC voltage so therefore the current is going to rise linearly at a rate given by uh, so what is the rate um, the slope M is the applied voltage in this case it is V in divided by the inductance and again in this case is the inductance referred to the primary side L primary okay. so that's the slope and for the uh, for a moment just um, um, assume that the initial value of I1 is this value. Okay. I will come back and explain exactly uh, where this comes from and what is this initial value. Okay, Then uh, we know that I2 is 0 therefore the uh, uh, looking at um, um, this 
flex expression here since uh, i2 is um, 0 so that goes away and uh, the flex is completely determined only by the i1 in the on interval okay? so if uh, i1 is rising um, linearly the flex will also be rising linearly at a, 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 a at a similar rate okay? the, the rates will be the slope will be different because this is a current waveform this is a flex waveform but they are related just by a constant okay? um, the most interesting part is uh, right at this instant when the switch is turned off. Okay? So when the primary switch is off, I1 has nowhere else to go. So I1, um, as indicated in this waveform, goes from this peak value to zero instantaneously. Okay? Now, just prior to this turn off instant, um, the I1 was at the peak value and therefore there is a corresponding energy stored in the magnetic core. Okay? Now this energy would force the diode on the secondary side to conduct. Uh, another way of understanding is, uh, let's say, you know, somehow there was no secondary current I2 and we switched off um, uh, I1. So the flex would go from this finite value to zero, right? So there's a very large discontinuity, uh, very large um, and a negative d phi over dt that produces a very large uh, negative voltage spike in the primary and therefore on the secondary and this large negative voltage spike would, um, you can see, uh, forward bias this diode. Okay? But the bottom line is the diode is forced to conduct when the switch is turned off. Okay? And that is indicated in the I2 waveform. I2 was initially zero when the switch was on, and just when the switch is turned off, uh, instantaneously I2 jumps to this um, uh, peak value. Okay? Now, also uh, it's important to note that I2 is entering the dot Therefore, the flex produced by this um, uh, I2 would also be in the same direction, meaning uh, positive flex as uh, in this uh, waveform. Um, then the question is, what is the magnitude of uh, the, uh, what is the peak value to which this I2 jumps instantaneously when the switch is turned off? Okay, so that will be obtained by the requirement that the uh, phi C, uh, the net flex, um, due to I1 at the instant just prior to turn off is exactly equal to the phi C created by I2 just after the turn off. Okay? So, um, so if I call this peak value as I1 peak and the peak value of I2 as uh, I2 peak, okay? then the flex just before, uh, call this as, uh, let me call this instant when it turns off as T1. So I would say uh, at T1 minus just small time before T1, uh, the flex phi C would be N1 I1 peak over the reluctance. Okay. And uh, just after T1, uh, so the T1 plus the phi C is given by the current in the secondary winding, when it turns is N2, so that would be N2 I2 peak, okay. that is the value of I2 at that instant divided by the same reluctance. So that gives us the relationship and these were equal, right? Uh, so we have N1 I1 peak equals N2 I2 peak. Therefore, the value of I2 peak would be N1 over N2 times the I1 peak. Okay, then uh, uh, the fact that the diode is conducting means that the uh, um, the secondary voltage uh, here is same as my uh, secondary side voltage source. So defining this as uh, say V2, obviously it's positive here and negative here. Therefore, um, the secondary voltage defined positive at the dotted end, negative here. Um, so this would be minus V2 when the diode is conducting. So this is when Q equals zero, okay, so which is off on the primary side. So because of the negative voltage applied, um, the current I2 is uh, falling. So the slope at which it falls, the M2 here, would be now um, minus V2, the secondary side voltage, divided by the L, but refer to the secondary side. Okay, so that is the slope. And uh, it comes on at that slope and um, um, it happens till the start of the next cycle at this instant. That is when I turn on the primary side switch uh, again. 
So what happens at that instant is uh, once the primary switch is on, we are applying again a positive voltage to the primary winding that would induce a positive voltage on the secondary side and that would reverse bias the diode. Okay. So the I2 would uh, uh, turn off here, jump from this final value to zero and at the same time uh, to keep the flex continuous, the again the energies, um, to, to keep the flex continuous, the I1 would jump from zero to this value here. Okay. So that is the, the initial value that I talked about. Um, remember these are all in steady state. So this value here is exactly the same as the starting value. Okay. So And um, uh, again, the question is, what is this value? Okay. So let me call this as, say, uh, I1, uh, say, low, the lower value. Um, and therefore, I'll call this as I2, low. Okay. So this new value of I1, uh, low, would be I1, low, equals N2, over N1, the other winding, by its own winding, turns, um, times the I2 low. And uh, by the way, we have uh, just learned our very first isolated converter. So the schematic shown here, this is really uh, something similar to what we'll be studying in detail in later videos called the flyback uh, converter. Flyback flyback converter with some uh, small changes. So, so instead of this battery on the secondary side, uh, it will actually have a capacitor and the load. Okay, so what you have established so far is that flex continuity is required. And this flex continuity can be supported by current in any one or multiple windings at a given time. Okay, Now, when we analyze uh, switching converters with the multiple windings and multiple switches and diodes, uh, it, it is sometimes useful to give this rule in terms of the dot polarity. Okay? So that rule is given here. It says that uh, if the flex supporting current in any winding, say W1, so if, if that current is entering the dot and if that current is interrupted okay, by uh, turning off a switch, for example, then it is required that we have a current that enters the dot. So the key word here is if if the first current in W1 was entering the dot prior to this uh, interruption, then to support flex continuity, the current in the other winding should enter dot. Okay? Um, so, so think about it and make sure that you understand this clearly. Uh, we can also say that if the flex supporting current in W1, which was uh, interrupted, was leaving the dot prior to this interruption, then to support flex continuity, uh, a current should leave the dot in the second binding. To, to illustrate this point further, consider uh, this circuit schematic. So in this, uh, when the switch is on, we have a current, uh, just like we saw in the previous example, we have the current entering the dot on the primary. Now, when this current is interrupted by turning off the switch, what we need is a current that enters the dot on the secondary winding. But clearly, this diode uh, is placed in such a uh, direction that it will allow, it will support only a current in this direction, left to right, and that current would only leave the dot. Okay? But whereas what we need is a current that enters the dot. Therefore, this circuit is a not is not a valid circuit uh, because it violates flux continuity. Uh, meaning, when the primary current is interrupted, there is no way we can maintain the flux continuous in the in the core. Okay, so this is the circuit that we saw in the previous slide and established this is invalid. Okay? Now, just by uh, replacing, um, just by changing this dot, um, just by changing the sense of winding direction, um, making the dot come to the bottom as shown here. So this is the same circuit except the uh, sense of winding direction on the secondary is different from the original case. Therefore, the dot appears at the bottom. Okay? Now, this is a, is a valid circuit because when the switch is on, current again enter, enters the dot, and when the switch is turned off, we need a current that enters the dot on the secondary side. So that will be in, in this direction. Okay? And that current is uh, readily supported by this diode. The current is in this direction. Okay? So this is a valid circuit. So that's an example of how the dot polarity can uh, e either make a circuit valid or invalid. Okay, so I'm going to stop uh, the discussion here at this point, and I would strongly encourage you to watch the video on um, uh, a few examples on the flex continuity.